let's talk about how much it cost. Now for the outside, uh, the covering. So for the roof, um, I, I chose to go with a rubber roofing. I didn't, uh, I didn't use a her uh, her Herculean type uh, rhino covering or anything like that, or or aluminum over top. I went ahead and with the rubber roof. One, it's inexpensive. It's easy to install, and you can you can buy a, buy a large section and uh, cover a, a large section for relatively little. So the rubber roof. Um, I can't remember exactly how much I purchased. I think it was 12 feet perhaps and it came in uh, 110 inches wide and that was about $80 for the rubber roof. Very inexpensive. Uh, there's also a contact cement or, or a roofing cement that comes with that and that was $10 a gallon. And then we have the aluminum siding. So I chose to go with the aluminum siding on the outside and from Hemet Valley RV in California that was flat out shipping and everything fourteen hundred dollars for the aluminum and I'm very well pleased with it it turns out really well and um, it just looks factory I, I really like it you also have the trim pieces uh, the molding for the outside edges and the back and the and the top on the sides I used about seven pieces I think they come in eight foot sections maybe ten foot I think one of them were and they were roughly on an average about $20 each. So I've got about $140 in the trim pieces and so for the rubber roof, the aluminum siding and the trim pieces came in uh, a total of $1630. Okay, moving on I also used a Eternabond tape. Uh, that's what I put on the outside edges of all the corners. I also uh, Put a turn of bond tape on the bottom to seal the uh, the aluminum to the to the bottom of the chassis there. So for uh, for the white, I purchased one roll at 50 feet. That was 45 dollars a roll. I also used some of that on the solar panel too as well. Uh, and also purchased a roll of the white. I think they're they're four inches wide, and that was 25 dollars for the white. Uh, 25 foot roll and then I also purchased a black 2 inch by 50 feet and that was about $40 so the Eterna Bond tape alone uh, was a grand total of $110 then we had the trailer lights and the marker lights for on the outside of the trailer so for the the rear LED trailer lights I purchased two of those those were $25 for the set uh, the marker lights. I ended up with about 14 marker lights, roughly around five bucks each. So you're looking at seventy dollars for the uh, trailer lights and the marker lights for a grand total of ninety-five dollars. Now, the optional equipment, because this is something you don't need, but I went ahead and indulged myself and splurged. Solar panels. For the solar panel and the controller, I used a Lens Sun so, uh, solar panels and the uh, EP Ever uh, Tracer controller. That was $700 for two 100 watt panels. Um, and with that, I also purchased two of the 6 volt batteries. That came in at about $388. And then the uh, solar wire, I needed an extra couple of extra lengths of uh, wiring. I think they're 25 feet each. And uh, that came in about $25 for the set. Then I also purchased some extra MC4 connectors. So for when I connect my solar power and all the solar wiring. That was roughly around $10 for the MC4 connectors. Moving on. So I probably didn't have to purchase this. But I did purchase the crimpers to install the MC4 connectors onto the solar wire. That was $18 for the crimper. Uh, miscellaneous battery cables. I uh, probably bought a couple of cables that I didn't need, but roughly around $35 for uh, a six foot section and a couple of the two foot sections that I didn't end up using. So 35 bucks for the battery cables. Uh, terminal block. 
which I have installed in here. Um, I think that is a Blue C. That was $40 for the 12-volt terminal block. I also purchased the four inline fuses, the 40 amp, and for four of those that came in around $29 for the set. I also purchased the uh, remote meter for uh, for the controller. So, I'm, I mean, if you're going to have a solar setup, you're going to want to be able to see what's going on with solar panels as far as the power coming in and what you're using. So, uh, I think that's a must-have if you're going to go with solar. And although I could have probably found it a little cheaper, I paid around thirty-five dollars for that. And then. Uh, for the outside because the way my trailer is built um, I don't have steps on it so I did purchase an RV step that's collapsible that I can put in and out of the trailer whenever I need it and I paid uh, thirty dollars for that so just for the optional stuff that you don't have to have okay I spent a total of thirteen hundred and ten dollars for the solar equipment uh, so that gives us a grand total and we're going to need a drum roll, please. Grand total of $7,407. And that could be a little bit on the high side because I was guessing some of these at a little bit high. I did have to go back and research some of the pricings, but at the time I purchased these, prices were just a little bit lower. So I use today's prices on most of this stuff. So we're looking at about $7,400. And, uh, and that's what I have in the build so far for a 6x12 trailer, which is uh, very well built. Now, that might seem a little bit high, but if you do a little bit of comparison, which at first I was guessing that I would probably spend around 5,000 tops on the, tra on the uh, trailer itself. And I would probably come pretty close if I didn't purchase all the extra stuff that uh, you know the solar power and stuff so the question is if you were going to build a trailer where can you save money at now I, di I didn't have a budget and uh, although money was sort of like no object I was uh, watching what I spent I didn't just go out and buy top-of-the-line stuff uh, you know I kept it very reasonable so where, where, what can you do to save some money? Well, number one is the trailer itself. After I totaled up what uh, I did spend on the trailer, I ended up spending about almost $1,100 for the trailer. For what I ended up with, I thought maybe that was a little on the high side. If you go price a new trailer, um, it's probably right around in the ballpark. I could have probably got off with just purchasing a brand new trailer frame. Uh, wheels and, and axle and stuff for about the same price but uh, many of the places that I looked at they didn't offer the torsion axle so I would have had a another expense there so I'm within that ballpark but if you wanted to save some money your best bet is to uh, search the, uh, the classified ads search Craigslist or, or find an old trailer of some sort somewhere and by doing so, if you purchase something that's already there, that's used, maybe somebody had a trailer that they stripped down right to the frame, you can probably save yourself 500 bucks plus off the bat if you purchased a trailer, an older trailer or something like that that you might have to put a little labor in, polish it up, paint it, maybe change out the wheels and tires, but you could save, uh, you know, you could save yourself some money on the trailer alone. Next place I think where you could probably save some money is uh, the cushions themselves. Now everything that I have is is new. There's nothing. I don't think there's anything new uh, used in here. I didn't purchase anything used uh, other than at the RV surplus store. But it's new old stock, so it's not used. It's just discontinued items or things that didn't sell or you know they no longer manufacture. So. Um, that's what I use but if you want to save yourself some money for the cushions you can reuse cushions from an older trailer that you might have or you can search the the classified ads or Craigslist and find something that will suit your needs for a lot less 
and you could probably save yourself you know I spent what did I say about seven hundred dollars on the cushion having somebody sew it and the material uh, if you did a little research and did some shopping and be a little frugal you could probably save yourself about five hundred dollars to that um, another area where you could probably save yourself some money is the wood you could also build lighter um, did I need to double up the studs I probably didn't have to did I need to use 12 inch centers on the stud probably didn't need to uh, did I need to panel the outside of the trailer um, as I did probably didn't have to so with that you could save yourself uh, some money by building a little bit lighter using less material uh, and still still build something rigid and strong you could save yourself uh, maybe one to two hundred dollars maybe a little bit more by building something just a little bit lighter um, another place where you could save yourself some money is obviously the solar power is that necessary um, no no the solar isn't uh, necessary now the solar uh, equipment that I purchased was a little bit over a thousand dollars you know the batteries and uh, the solar panels and such uh, you could probably use something less expensive Harbor Freight sells things I see people on YouTube uh, install Harbor Freight panels for hundred and fifty dollars which will probably do the same thing will they last as long I don't know will they work as well they probably will but you could probably save yourself you know a thousand dollars if you if you didn't go with solar power at all you could use uh, instead of 12 volt lighting you could always go with the uh, battery operated puck lighting I use that in my travel uh, my teardrop trailer and they worked out just fine but here I, I wanted something a little bit more uh, extravagant I guess more of like a glamper kind of style so uh, no regrets on my lighting another area that you could probably save some money is the siding itself now I spent uh, fourteen hundred dollars on the aluminum siding where you know I could have probably cut that down to eight hundred dollars if I if I used the phylon but the phylon would have been a lot of extra work and had I not done it right uh, I'd end up spending more money because I'd have to redo something so right off the bat you could probably save yourself about twelve twelve hundred dollars by not using the aluminum siding especially new stuff what can you use well if you did a good job on sealing the seams whether you fiberglass taped it or use some other material to cover the seams maybe just go all wood um, you wouldn't need the aluminum siding you can coat it with uh, enamel painting or products like that a lot of top sides on boats use enamel painting so uh, it wouldn't be uncommon for people to paint the outside of their trailers also uh, I just chose to do the aluminum siding because I thought it looked really good so uh, where else can you save some money does your trailer need the sink and the faucets and the water and and, uh, and things like that so these are things that you you think about as you're building do I need these things or are they just something that I want in my case it's something that I wanted um, I will probably use it but I think in a resale value alone uh, it'll be more attractive to to someone who wants to purchase something that has running water it's almost fully self-contained so if you didn't have that set up you could probably save yourself about four hundred dollars so the areas that you can save money whether it's you know purchasing used trailer purchasing uh, reconditioned or, or used cushions building lighter going with no solar just using battery operated equipment uh, maybe a different uh, siding material doing away with sink and running water and such you could probably save yourself anywhere from thirty five to thirty eight hundred dollars uh, alone without all that extra options there so you can build a trailer like this for roughly around three thousand maybe thirty five hundred dollars without all the extra uh, uh, gadgets that that this one has now 
The $7,400 seems a little high when I first figured this up, but if you did away with the solar power, which in the, in the beginning I don't know if I uh, actually had planned that out whether I was going to do that or not. So, you know, it would be roughly around $5,000, $5,500 for the trailer itself, which was about what I estimated it would be. So you throw in the uh, <coughs> all the extra lights and the solar and stuff like that, that, that brings that value up. And uh, although that might seem a little high for, uh, for a small trailer, you, you consider something. Uh, if you look online, if you go to any RV stores or, or just shop around and, and see what's out there. Brand new, okay? I'm not talking used, but brand new trailers of this size and say of that quality. Um, the cheapest that I could find was a Forest River uh, and I think those were 11 footers. They started out at roughly $13,000. So you take that price tag of $13,000. Now most of us <laughs> I'm I'm gonna glue myself because I don't walk around with thirteen thousand dollars in my wallet so chances are you're gonna have to finance this and when you finance something of course you always are looking at the lowest payment because you know you want to have money left over at the end of the month to actually go somewhere with your purchase so if you took a twelve thousand dollar and we'll just use that as an average a $12,000 trailer, brand new, off the lot, and you finance that, okay? And your payments, you're roughly around $150, $160. In this case, uh, I'm looking at $164 a month for a $12,000 loan. To keep it down, to keep the payment down, you'd finance that for about 84 months. So just, uh, just about seven years, you're going to be financing this bad boy. And assuming that your credit is good, you'd be looking anywhere from 3 4% interest. Your total after paying this thing off after seven years, seven and a half years, will be about $13,770 something dollars. So almost $14,000. So when I use that kind of comparison, and let's say I spent $7,400 building this one, uh, I'm saving 50% almost right off the top. So with the amount that I've spent on the trailer, I'm happy with it for several reasons. One, I know what I have. While it is no Airstream, I would say that it's probably just as good a quality, if not better. Um, also, when I look at the $7,400, I'm debt free because it's paid for. And that's, uh, that's one of the benefits, and I'm happy with it. So, I hope that satisfies some of the curiosity that you might have and gives you some ideas on where you might uh, be able to save yourself some money. You don't need to spend the amount of money that I did purchasing this. Your budget might be a little bit lower. So, shop around for um, materials that will suit your need, and stick to your budget. If your budget is $1,000, try not to go over. Just shop around. Give us some time. Uh, that $7,400 that I have in this trailer, I didn't purchase all at once. Uh, it's spread out, what, almost, probably almost two years now uh, since I first come up with the idea uh, until right now. So uh, that payment was spread out over a couple years, so it doesn't seem quite as big now. But anyway, uh, hope that does it, and uh, I think the next video, because I'm starting to get a, a lot of questions and uh, a lot more people are asking the same questions, so we might have to do a, a question and answer. Uh, and one of the reasons is because my water tanks still haven't arrived yet, so I can't continue uh, building and getting things put in place before, uh, you know, before those tanks come along. So anyway... I hope, uh, hope this was uh, of use and helpful. So with that, I'd say uh, stay tuned. Thanks for watching. And if you haven't already, please like. And uh, I'll see you next time.